This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, so we're at a factory here. They build shelving and stuff like that. And the machine I'm gonna be working on burns off paint off the hooks because they paint the shelving. And that's what we're working on. It's a basically a big, uh, big old freaking oven. Uh, this is the weird stuff a lot of times I don't show you and I have no clue uh, much about this machine other than what I've read and then now I am figuring it out. So if you guys are interested in seeing how to diagnose things that you have never seen before, let's take a look at it and see what we got. Yeah, you can record me well if you want to. <laughs> that doesn't bother me This all. looks like a machine did it. And he's actually doing this by hand, one-handed. This is crazy. So... Yeah, sure. Some bitches are heavy. Yeah, I was gonna say, you... Well, After it's all said and done, they're over 100 pounds. So you just do a couple tacks and then work your way around, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. There we go. So that was that guy welding. Um, so this is the device we're working on. It's a big firing box. And what they do is they run these hooks in there and these hooks, you know, they gotta burn that crap off. And so they get it real super hot. The way this thing works, and I just learned this out a little bit ago. So obviously you got a firebox here and you got the burner down here at bottom. It shoots into there, heat comes out, and, you know, it gets hot in here. Then you have your afterburner here, which this one shoots the flame out and then goes right up the stack. That can get 16 to 1800 degrees. And then this is just all insulated. Now up here in the top here, and I learned this, like I said, just before I went out and grabbed the water out of the truck, you have your spire suppression system right here. That, that, that's this right there. And that's how it regulates the temperature down, I guess, if it gets a little too crazy. And uh, that works, we just played that a minute ago. I just stuck my camera in there and took a picture of the uh, igniter and flame rod which the way these work, it's just like a, uh, this is a natural gas burner, which are coming in at 20, uh, 28 inches of water column. Okay, and it is high pressure. And then it obviously drops down here. We got high and low pressure switches, which we gotta make sure those are closing. And then eventually it gets to these burners. Uh, I was reading through the sequence operations. I didn't know how it worked. It tells you that the, I think it was the top one comes on first and uh, we got a schematic here. The schematic lays some of it out. I have a funny feeling it's in one of the safety circuits because the motors aren't even coming on. So that's what I'm doing to start out. So I basically needed to know how it works. What I did is I first asked them about it and they explained it to me. Now I'm gonna read about it and just make sure that I understand it. Essentially you have a door switch right here. That door switch has to be closed. And then you hit this button right here when it's doing it and then it's controlled either this one here or this one here does it. Uh, this obviously says it's for the uh, furnace temp controller. This one here is for the stack controller. It's set for 1600. That's going to control these water solenoids here that kick on that suppression system up there on top. Uh, you can do a manual valve by going like this and it'll put water in there and then here's your water pressure. You need 40 pounds of pressure so one of the first things I started checking if it was set in there and you needed it was to make sure that this pressure switch was closed. So that's just like a well pressure switch. And so I, I wanted to show you that. That's what we're doing. And like I said, still no closer to knowing what's wrong yet, but I always like um, to kind of show sequence operation or just kind of how I went about getting it. Because like I said, you don't always know what's going on. This old fashioned looking thing here is a uh, data logger, old fashioned data logger, keeps track of temperature. So it, it rotates with time, <clears throat> and then whatever it's measuring, temperature, whatever, it moves out further and it regulates it and keeps track of it. So, three through here. So toggle switch, turns on the controllers. <clears throat> so power goes here, then to here. Cycle timer here. And then you got some relays in there. You had door interlocks, which like I said, this time you had to close it, but which makes no sense because, wow. Okay, so they want this door open when it fires, so basically got enough air. So even though it's not hitting, they usually do this manually. So when I move that open, boom, those three lights just came on. 
which tells us door switch, cycle timer, and afterburner switch. So this should be allowing the power then to go on to the next thing, um, which I'm not seeing it. Call out one. So it looks to me like that's calling outward, so it should be going to the burner. Let's see what the schematic says it happens after the furnace temp controller. Okay, so I've been playing with the switch, opened it up, the timer's not turning, but I do have 120 volts on here. When you rotate the switch around, there is a little teardrop and a micro switch right there. After that micro switch, what it goes on over to, comes out of that cycle switch right there, and then goes over to the burner toggle switch. So I'm like, okay, the top one I believe hits first. And you're like, oh, and I'm like, wait a minute, that feels, ooh, that's hot, it's hot. My motor's got an issue, obviously. It's hotter than heck. The motor's not starting. If the motor don't run, then the pressure switch ain't gonna go and then nothing's gonna run. So there's your problem. So we took the screws out of it and the motor did not spin very freely. Um, then we got looking over here, you got a capacitor up on top. Still need to check to see what the rating is, but it came in right at like 1.4, so that seems a little low. Maybe we'll get lucky and it's just a bad capacitor, but maybe that motor is hotter and I'll get out. Okay, we got it down. This is rated for three microfarads. Give or take five percent. And it does not come in that high, it comes in just below two. One point two nine five. Five percent of one. I'd say it's a little out of whack. We'll grab a four. I have a four on the truck. Let's see if it works. Uh, I the motor needs to place. Uh, if you can even get it. So that's a weird little baby motor. All right. So we got a four on there. It's a touch big, but it'll at least make it run. This one here, you can see we've shrunk and deformed. I don't know if that's from the motor getting so hot or what, but let's try this again. Turn on there, rotate, boom, and then turn this power on over here. Let's see if it starts or does, and we'll shut it back off again. But there you go. Something. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I was getting ready to fire. It was actually starting to fire. So it's going to run. Um, whew, no delay at all, man. Holy dog poop. Uh, it needs a new capacitor. We need to get the right one, but that'll be good enough to get them going so they can at least do their job. Uh, I'm gonna clean probably the flame sensors and stuff on it. It's just like regular freaking flame sensors that you would see on a generic old fashioned intermittent pilot uh, gas uh, furnace. So we're gonna tape that capacitor up, make it work. Uh, should be rolled, get ready to go. Now, like I said, something hit, and he says they blow these out, which you can see that fan is kind of dirty. Something is in there. I really think we need to replace the motor, especially if this thing's important. Uh, we need to get that uh, assembly there back on too, also. We got it back together. I cleaned out the fan blades with my screwdriver and then used the brush and brushed it out. I may wire tie that here in a second. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Let's go over here and see if we can make this thing go fire. Something that just doesn't fire. I might have just dumped out. Yep, there it is. Isn't that great? That's how it works. Up in there and get yourself a little warmed up there. That's it, man. Fancy, fancy. Yeah. And since it's a power burner, it's uh, the combustion air is right there, you know? So it doesn't really need anything that's in here. And it seems to be firing pretty good. Um, there we go. I had that air cut back a little bit. 
was too crazy, huh? But that was stuck quite a bit. any chemicals that are in there before it goes out to the chimney and it doesn't go out and, you know, do whatever chemicals do when they're in the air. And uh, that one there I didn't screw with, so I don't know if it's a lot good or any idea to change it anyway. But yeah, it's some sort of conveyor oven there, and that's the uh, shelving and stuff that they make. And all of the lights are good to go, which is nice. That timer thing, I'm not real sure if that even works or if it ever works. I think they, these are timers up here. I'm going to fiddle things with a little bit. But yeah, that's what we got. Okay. I say we shut her down and see if she'll fire off because once you've messed with the gas, air adjustment, things act stupid after that. So right now it's 160 in that room. Stacks running at five minutes five. I mean, you could shut, you could shut off one burner technically. She goes down. Let everything clear. Back on. Yeah, there ain't no pushing button or nothing as long as you've got that thing happy and they like I said they want to, they want you to fire this off when the door opens so you have enough gas or enough oxygen in the room less likely to make something explode I guess whatever works right oh. It'd be nice to have a little better adjustment though I turned it off and the uh, little sprinkler things came on as soon as I turned it back on you can tell that like a wet pack in there, which is what we used to call the fuel oil burners. It's basically, that's probably the most of the work right there. Okay, right there is your ignition. You can see the heavy cable there for the insulated cable. And then that green looking thing must be the uh, flame sense. Uh, they got two, hold, two bolts on there, kind of in a tight spot. and. Yeah, it's kind of hot. So that's about it. Um, I'm gonna hold off on that. We'll see about maybe getting a motor for this, see what they want to do on that back. That looks kind of old. Back to the uh, diagram here. Like I said, the biggest thing is understanding your basics, safety switches, stuff like that. I mean, this isn't really too overly complicated. I mean, timer circuits can get a little bit complicated when you've never used them before. But, you know, having this right here at the very beginning telling you that what's happening, what's happening next, and where it's located at, boom, you got it. So, uh, for the new guys out there, you know, if it's something you ain't seen before, dissect it one uh, bite at a time and uh, until you get her where you need to get her. That's, uh, that's what we did. All right, guys, it's going to wrap that one up. It didn't take too horribly long, so the video may not be very long, but it's something different. Anyhow, if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.